Hi, I'm John Tebow, and I'm here today to show you my self-sufficient solar panel system. It produces 172 watts on really bright days. It's pretty powerful. Uh, I use multi-crystalline panels that I'll show you in a minute. I actually built the panels myself as well, literally with the uh, three and a half by six inch cells. I soldered them together in strings. So we'll go in here, and it's actually my back room where we have our uh, HVAC heat exchanger, full exchanger. So here we are. I'll start off with my batteries. These are two deep cycle 105 amp hour batteries. They're wired in parallel to give a 12 volts to the inverter. And this is a uh, Xantrax per watt inverter. And uh, as you can see right now, we have 13.2 volts, zero uh, kilowatt hours being pulled. And right there, this little piece right here, this is a pretty cool little piece of equipment. Basically what this does is it measures the voltage constantly. And if it drops below 11.9 volts, it shuts off the power to the inverter. So we don't pull the batteries too far down. And yes, the inverter does have a shut off, but it was, the shut off is at 10.5 volts. And that is a completely dead battery. And you don't want to take your deep cycle batteries lower than anything below 50%. Because uh, that's bad for them and it'll lower the lifetime of them. So this is all wired um, a little bit crudely, but all this goes back to the breaker right there. And then the breaker controls the shed. Left breaker controls my bedroom. Right one controls the shed. Pretty simple stuff. And we'll go over to our charge controller. This is a Sunsaver MPPT charge controller. A maximum of 15 amps output. You can put in as many amps as you want. Actually, sorry, no. You can put in 30 amps, but it will just take that 30 amps and just dump it. So you don't want to deal with that. And it'll also get very hot when you do that. But everything's working pretty good now. I have a little, uh, little meter right there. It's... Uh, it's just an analog amp meter. Right now we're reading a little over 10 amps going in. So we're getting some good power today. Uh, it's a little bit sunny. And then this is our main shutoff switch. If we have to, we can shut the power off just in case. So I'll show you right now. We're gonna shut off the power to that. And you can tell right there, it just dropped an amperage like crazy. And we'll turn it back on, 100% amp. We're good. And I also have fuses everywhere. You're supposed to fuse everything, so I fuse the uh, power to the batteries, it charges them with a 20 amp fuse because it'll never go over 15 amps. And you have a 50 amp fuse going from the batteries to the to the. Sorry about that, my camera died for some reason. Yeah, so that 50 amp fuse over here is going right over to our voltage controller here. So this will make sure that uh, and when the voltage drops too low, it turns off the power to the inverter, so it can't be used anymore. So basically that's that, and I also wanted to explain that this MPT charge controller, basically I send the voltage in at 60 volts and a maximum of 3 amps across the line that comes in from outside from the panels, and the charge controller takes it down to 60 volts, or no sorry, 12 volts, and, and it ups the amperage as you go in. So if you have 120 watts coming in, let's say you have 60 uh, 60 volts at 1 amp, then what you'll have is 12 volts at 5 amps. So it, it's pretty simple how it works, and it, it really works well, too. I mean, it's it's like, uh, I think it's 98% efficient. So that's pretty efficient for solar panels, you know. So the panels themselves aren't that efficient, but the system it is. <laughs> so anyway, back to this. I have some cool little lights here just, to, just in case you always have some light. It's their um, car fluorescent lights, so they use very low power. You can see the actual amperage that they use as it goes down on the meter. See? Yeah, anyway, we'll keep them on for just a minute. And uh, we also have our switch here. This switch is uh, pretty interesting because this controls the volt controller right here. Now, if the voltage goes down to, let's say, 11.8 volts, it's going to shut off the power to the inverter. If you push this switch up, this is how I wired it. This is a double pull, double throw switch. Basically, it switches the poles of negative and positive to a single pole into here. So basically, when you flip it up, it 
overrides this completely. So no matter what happens, the power is going to go right through this. So basically it overrides it. Then when you flip it down, it tells this to shut off the power. So it turns off the relay in here, and then turns off the power to the inverter. I can show you if you'd like, but I really don't like to do that because it makes a... Um, it shouldn't be done that much because we're using a little bit of power right now, so not the best idea. But everything's pretty good. And right now I'm going to go outside and show you the actual panels. Uh, by the way, I use 6 gauge wire for everything. Just to keep everything safe, I use the screw, screw type screw-ons for the batteries. So it keeps everything simple. I bought these batteries at Batteries Plus for about $100 each. Meter is 13 bucks at Bainesville Electronics. The breaker was $20 at uh, Home Depot. The MPPD charge controller was $230. That was the most expensive part of the project. Just because it has to do some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I mean, taking all that voltage and turning it into amperage has some... It takes some pretty good technology and good transformers that... Uh, are switching transformers that really have to handle a lot of current. So... That's why it's so expensive. And basically, I got these fuse holders at Walmart. They're pretty cheap. You can buy them there for cars. Since everything's 12 volts, it works out perfectly. Uh, most of the fuses I got at Walmart, too. And let's see what else do we have here. The Xantrex charge, uh, inverter was $120 off the internet. I got it... Uh, I forgot where I got it. I think it was Inverters R Us. Yeah, that's where I got it from. They're a pretty good company. This I bought from, um, this is really hard to find, the uh, bolted shut-off. See, they, use them on, they used to use them on cars until they in integrated them into their regular programming into the computer of the car. But, um, so I had to find this one. This one was uh, 1994. It's a pretty old thing, but it seems to work perfectly. But, there was no other way to do it, so that was the best thing I could do. This breaker box right here, this is cheap, uh, like $40 at uh, Home Depot cheap stuff, easy to put together, easy to set up. And then um, you may ask how I have this tapped into my house. Well, basically I have the power going out of the breaker and going straight down this wall and that's where my main breaker to the house is. And basically I changed the, uh, the hot and the neutral to this for that specific thing. So we tied in the neutral from the solar panels to the neutral of the regular pan of the uh, breaker box and then we tied in the hot directly to the breaker. It's pretty simple to do, not that bad. And uh, right now we're yeah, doing a little bright out two today, breakers but, uh, in my office yeah, really bright. and then the but shed as well. Perfect for the panels. So. It's pretty good. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go run outside anyway, and yeah, show you the so rest of the stuff. We have our shed right there. As you can tell, there's uh, solar panels on both sides of them. Basically, each panel is 20 volts and it has a maximum output of 30, or sorry, 3 amps and we wire them together in series so they put out 60 volts at 3 amps and then we have both panels on both sides wired in parallel to each other so we can get 60 volts at a maximum of 6.5 amps so as you can tell both panels are up there they're pretty nice you can see we painted them just to make sure they match both sides the HOA gave us hell to put these things up unfortunately they're So now we'll go into the shed real quick. And this shed's actually 100% solar power as well. So I did all the wiring in here too, just to let you know. So basically, we have um, that's the power in from the solar panels, the black and the red wire. So basically, we have black and red. So we have two reds come in, to turn into parallel together into the green wire. And then we have the two blacks come in from the roof, which is the negative side. And they go directly together to go to the black wire that goes directly into the house. We have it going in. You can see it's on the side there. My dad tapped it in there. But yeah, basically it goes there. And then we dug a pipe outside of the shed. It goes all the way over. As you can see right over there, it goes right into the house. That took some work. I painted it, made it look a little nicer. That was a little hard to do, but uh, unfortunately here we have rock for dirt instead of uh, nice clay dirt. No, we have ridiculous rock. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the panels are just held up there by all brackets. They're pretty simple to use. Um, and then we just re we reinforce it with a piece of wood on the other side. Pretty simple. Doesn't need to look too good because this one's out of a shed. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. You can't really even tell from the inside. It just looks like pieces of wood. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. This has uh, been a production by John T. Bell. I worked on this project for about uh, about five months and finished the panels themselves, soldering them together. And then it took a couple other months to order some pieces and get it completely finalized to the point where it is now. I have meters reading and we're actually using 100% of the power. So it's pretty good. Everything's all worked out nicely. Um, I appreciate you guys watching this. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment, post, anything. And um, please let me know what you think. This project took me a long time. I'd really even like to know what you guys think about it. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Life is a melody. Life is a chord.